Uh, hello, I want to uh, welcome you to this uh, short video. Uh, we have titled it Game of Communication. Uh, this is a part of the uh, technical communication skills course as a part of the T10KT. Um, when I am looking at game of communication, we usually do not relate with communication as a game, but if you were to look at it, you would probably want to know what is a scoreboard. So, I am just going to share with you some of the uh, thoughts, some of the experiments, some ways to empower you as well as uh, people you would be dealing with. And um, whatever I am sharing with you is things that have worked and because the time is not enough, I cannot share with you uh, all the number of times that we have failed. So, um, I really if there is one thing to communicate, uh, what I would communicate in this episode is I would really encourage practice and sharing as a discipline. So, I am able to say what I am able to say because there have been a large number of students and I should say generous students who have uh, given an opportunity for me to work with them. And so, the practice that was available in doing that and then the sharing of it. So, from one class to the next class, the sharing of the work that got done, uh, it is a part of the discipline that I have uh, come to imbibe. So, uh, I just want to share with you that as well that practice and sharing is something that I would very strongly uh, encourage as a discipline. Um, let us just take a look at if communication is a game and we want to become effective, we may want to look at what is the game at present. Okay. So, by and large my understanding is that most of us got trained uh, to focus on what you are going to present. And uh, sometimes once you know what you are going to present also how to present it. Okay. A little bit more about the shift in the game. If your focus has been on what you present and focus on how you present it, it allows a certain kind of an outcome. So, to give an example, we knew cricket to be a game which is played as test matches and then at some point in time we started doing the 50 overs limited overs one day cricket and then more recently we have the T20. Now, the quality of participation, the quality of engagement uh, has completely changed by virtue of uh, the scoreboard and the scoreboard first was given by 5 days of game and then 50 overs and then 20 overs. When I was a kid, I used to think earth is flat. I am sure most of you did too till the first lessons of geography and we figured out that earth is not flat. But there was a time when not just me as a child, but all of humanity used to think that earth is flat and so the ships would go up to a certain distance in the ocean and then come back because they were afraid that they would fall over. The moment the paradigm shifted, the moment the reality shifted that human beings are living on a planet which is spherical, our entire way of relating with the planet changed. So, we are going to be talking about paradigms. So, communication if it lives inside of a paradigm, if it lives inside of a certain reality that I know that I only knew as a flat earth and some things are possible and some things are not possible in that flat earth. However, now that the paradigm has changed, now that we have an understanding that the earth is spherical, maybe there are some things possible now which were not possible earlier. So, that is the magic of actually being able to recognize a paradigm and then work at the level of shifting the paradigm. So, in that sense, I am actually saying let us see if there is a shift in the paradigm of communication that we can bring about. So, 
the shift would come about, the access would come about in moving the focus from what and how to who is presenting and who is it being presented to. Okay? So, I will just want to stop there for a moment. The focus till now has been on what we are going to present and how we are going to present it. I am actually now asking you to look at it from a different angle or a different perspective and the angle of the perspective is coming from two questions. First one is who is presenting and if you are the person who is presenting then who and you might say your name or you might know say your designation, but that is not what I am referring to when I say who we will see how and who is it being presented to? Is it a student audience? Is it a group of scientists? Is it a public hearing? You and I know our students to be a particular way and given that they are a particular way, I then deal with them in, in, in a way that works for them. I am actually asking you to question who you think they are or who they are for you such that then you can begin to shift the paradigm and begin to relate in a way in which it should be effective. So, just some ways of looking at it. The moment I say who is teaching, the person who is teaching is someone who is committed to improving somebody's knowledge or improving somebody's understanding. Some of us also are doing it because it is a job. So, I am someone who is fulfilling on a job. So, who I am is someone who is fulfilling on a job. I am a teacher, so I am fulfilling on my job as a teacher and whatever the interpretation of teaching is for me. Some of us could even be doing it because it is a duty. I do not know how many times uh, you may have experienced this, but I am sure at some point in time uh, you have experienced it too. Um, sometimes, you know, if I uh, say thank you to someone, uh, a lot of times, especially uh, in an Indian context, uh, the response comes up as uh, no sir do not thank me it was my duty and uh, it almost for me is like uh, can I if it if it is your duty can I still thank you for doing it. Uh, so, a lot of times people see duty as something which is what they are the duty bound they have to do it. So, that is you and me who is actually doing the teaching or who is communicating who is presenting. Then there is the other side of the audience or the other the other side which is the audience where um, who is there who is sitting over there someone who is learning because they have to pass an exam. Okay. My, my entire learning my entire studying is oriented so that I can pass an exam or it could even be I mean probably passing an exam gets to be somewhere in the teenage years when people begin to see that they have to pass an exam, but maybe a little earlier sometimes people do not want to be punished or they know that there are some consequences and therefore, one has to do it if you do not do it then there would be consequences. So, that is the kind of um, condition or that is the kind of uh, thinking that is out there in the audience the people who we are trying to reach. So, who is there who is learning is people who have a collection of these conversations. So, there is one side which is teaching the who is teaching is someone who is improving, doing a job, being duty bound and the other side we have are people who are either learning to pass an exam or they do not want to have punishment, they want to avoid consequences and therefore, they have to. So, that is the range that we have with which we have been playing the game. So, um, the next step then is to actually inquire or articulate into who are you. The next step would be who are they because without an articulation of who you know yourself to be or who you declare yourself to be and who you know them to be or who you declare them to be there is no game. Communication is not going to happen it is going to be just by default in a condition in which we know sometimes it is effective and sometimes it is not effective. But if you are in the game of communication and you want to win these are two aspects that you may want to begin to articulate for yourself before you actually design the communication. 
one of the exercises that we could do is that we design a communication and then ask this question and the question is what is the question that they the audience the students should be able to answer successfully at the end of your communication. So, one more time if there was a question that you would ask at the end of your communication which they can successfully answer what would that question be. If they answered it successfully then you were successful, if they could not answer it successfully and there was a failure who failed and that is adequate there is nothing else to be done with that that is adequate that is complete in and of itself when you recognized that it failed you start again okay? and that is where the practice cycle goes over and over and over again and each time there is a new communication each time there is a new audience each time there is a new you each time there is a new them. So, with that the game continues thank you for your attention.